Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic. It's been a while since my last couple of tutorials using Silhouette Studio software, but I'm going to pick up where I left off on the last video. So if you haven't watched it, I'll leave the link in the description box below. And I'll also link to the complete playlist so that if you want to come back and watch any of these videos just to refresh your memory you'll have them all in one place so we left off with the cup at this small size it has a bit of an offset and it has the cut line if you can see the red there around it so everything's very small i sized it down to about an inch yes an inch high um, one thing I wanted to point out is this little triangle here. This is kind of a warning, letting you know that you are using what may be a low resolution image. What that means is the quality of the image is low as far as print, viewing it once it's printed. The printer needs more dots per inch to make the image clear. The, your, your device, like your laptop, your computer screen, most display only 70, 72 dots per inch. The printer can print at 300 dots per inch. So that's the difference. So if you print a 72 dots per inch image, it may or may not come out clear when you print it. It kind of really depends on how the image was created originally. There's a lot of factors, and I'm probably giving you more information than you need. I'm just letting you know that this little warning may mean that your image may not come out clear. I suspect that this might have been a low resolution image to begin with. But because it's so big, it won't affect the quality of this teeny tiny sticker that we're going to make. Um, so if that was too confusing, just ignore and we'll move on. But just so you know, sometimes you may see this um, warning with images that you purchase online. Okay. One other thing that you may not know is possible in Studio is that you can actually pull um, guides or ruler guides down onto your canvas area to keep you in line or to use to line things up. So by rule guides, this is what I mean. You can go to the ruler, if you can see here on the top and on the right, there is a ruler. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. You can go to that ruler, put your um, pointer over the ruler and drag down a guide. So I'm going to go ahead and pull myself some guides. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to stay within a certain range of the border. So remember I told you you don't want to put anything in the hash area. You could essentially put something here, but I'm going to design this. I'm going to set this up as if I were cutting sticker sheets to sell. That way they'll also be small enough that if I want to use one of those sticker storage books that I can do that. Um, Usually I print at the full eight and a half by 11 and just leave it that way. But I found lately it's easier to store them when they're the, when you break them up into smaller sheets. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's one reason for the rules. So I'm gonna pull another one down here to keep me out of this bottom margin area. Zoom out a little bit. Then I'm gonna pull another one over here. Keep me in line, and then one here. So basically, this is my live area that I can work in. And I'm gonna add two more guidelines. This is to split the page in half vertically and horizontally. So our first one we're gonna pull from the right, we want this to be at 4.25. If you're using letter paper, that is the center of your page up and down. So your page is eight and a half by 11. You divide that in two, it's 4.25. I 
just remember 4.25 is the center going left to right. Now we're going up and down. Our horizontal center is five and a half inches. Your page is 11 inches. Let me show you this again. You can drag the rules back up, by the way, or just hit delete. The page is 11 inches tall. Divide 11 by two, that's five and a half. Now, how I know I have my rule in the right place, if you look up here, it shows you the number. Let me see if I zoom in, it doesn't get any bigger. But it shows you where your rule is. So this rule is at 0 0.625. This rule is at seven point, I think I need to put my glasses on, 8.75. And this rule is at 4.25, which is our center. So if you, you want to see where your rules are, again, over here on the side, you can see where the rule is actually lined up at. So I'm going to bring this down to five and a half, and it'll show me on the right-hand side when I'm at five and a half. There we go. Okay. So that divides our page up into four squares. So one, two, three, four. Four square-ish shapes. So that's what I'm going to use to guide how I want my sticker sheets that I'm making lined up. So I'm going to highlight my sticker with the cut line around it, and I'm going to use the replicate panel, and I'm going to just do one replication or duplicate it to the right one time. The reason I'm doing it, just this, let me zoom in so you can see up close. The reason I'm only doing one time, even though I have the option here to do multiple times, is because I want to check the spacing. So I moved it over one time. As you can see, it duplicates and it does not leave any margin around between the cut lines. You may want it that way or you may not. Um, I think I want to give my cups a little room to breathe. So I am going to space over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight spaces. That way I have a little space in between and everything is not jammed up on itself or whatever. For now, I'm going to leave it that way. So I'm going to duplicate one more time and add my spaces. Now I can take all three of these and duplicate. and just add my spaces. And I think I want to, this is six cups. I think I want to do seven. So I'm going to do one more, duplicate, and enter my spaces. And I think that fills up the width of my square pretty nicely. Um, I'm going to select them all and group them together. So select all, control G, or select all, you can go to, I'm so used to doing this. <laughs> uh, with the keyboard. Okay, so I'm selecting all of them by highlighting or dragging my mouse over all of them. Then you can go to object group or you can just hit control G. Okay, so you might want to line this up, center it a little more, and if you want to get really specific about this, you can figure out the width and height of this little boxed area and line everything up perfectly. We're not going to do that today, so I'm just going to do something that I don't normally do, <laughs> and I'm just going to eyeball it. So I'm going to say that's approximately the center. So now I'm going to see how many rows I can duplicate down. Remember, we've already lined everything up. It's spaced evenly like we want it. So we can just duplicate this down. Again, you have the option to do multiples of 
three or four down. I'm still going to stick with one at a time for now. So I'm not doing that many, so I can handle one at a time. The top of the straw cut line is touching the bottom of the cut, cut line. So we want to give our cups room to breathe. So I did eight spaces down again. And let's see if we can get two out of this. Select both of them. Nope, we can't get two. So I'm just going to do one duplicate down and do my eight spaces. Okay, so we have three rows of seven cups each. So just in this one sheet, we got we have 21 stickers. So I'm going to group those together. And if you wanted to put some branding up here, um, you could just scoot, scoot that down like I just did and create your branding. Let's see. So you could use the rounded square option. And fill that in. And absolutely, you'd have to cut, turn the cut off. Then you could put your text in there and turn the cut off on that. But if you're interested in seeing how to do all that, comment below. And I'll show you how to set that up. But for now, since we're just using these for personal use, which is usually what the licensing terms are when you purchase graphics like this from Etsy shops. It's only for personal use, not for commercial use. Then we don't need to do any branding. Okay, so I've grouped all of my cups together. Now I'm going to duplicate them into the other spaces on the page. Remember we have four spaces. So if I want to fill this sheet up with just these cups, I can do that. Or if I wanted to add something else here, I can copy something from another file. But we're going to stick with the cups. So again, I'm going to my replicate panel, and I'm just going to replicate one to the right. Now it's going to put it right next to what I have. So I'm just going to hold down my shift key. Okay, let me show you what happens if I don't hold. So I could just drag this over and hope for the best or whatever <laughs> that is in you know that it's lined up pretty much the same as the other one if you want it lined up correctly you go back then what you do is once you replicate it you hold if you hold down your shift key while you're dragging it over it'll keep it on the same level keep it lined up with the original that makes any sense. So it's now it's just up to me to center it as best as I can. And there we have it. So you duplicate it one. Now oops. you can highlight both of these and duplicate down. Takes a minute because it's Then I'm just going to hold that shift key down again, keep everything lined up, and center those in the boxes. And we're done. So now it's just a matter of make sure you save, control S, save, save, save. Throughout that process, you need to be doing control S or file save. So now we're ready to print our stickers. So I'm going to go over here to send. Let me just stay on simple for now. So you can see where your cut lines are around your all your cups. Everything has a cut line that we want to cut out. You just need to make sure that. So then now all I do is go up here to file print. 
be sure that you have the correct printer. You can go in your preferences and choose the quality of print. Um, any, it depends on your printer what type of preferences you will have there, there as an option. Uh, I'm going to show you what I have. So I have plain paper, but then it has all these other types of paper. So you would choose what fits your needs. Um, and I think I'm going to do best quality for this. Best quality takes a really long time to print on my printer, but, and for whatever reason, I don't know why I have to go in here and tell it to do it twice. Best quality. And I think that's got something to do with my printer. It's an HP. So I've got my preferences the way I want them. I'm checking everything here. I'm on the right printer. All you have to do is make sure you have your self-adhesive paper in your printer before you print and then print your sheet. And I think I'm going to stop here and we will continue this in the next video. In the meantime, if you have any questions on this video, please leave them in the comments below and I will answer everything that I can answer for you. So that's it. And I hope to be able to do um, these studio tutorials more often. So if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and hit the little bell so that you don't miss anything when I upload. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.